Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today we're gonna to be working with Cornish game hens, and I'm actually gonna be walking y'all through a couple different ways you can prepare them for the dinner table. Now Cornish hens are very similar to chicken when it comes to flavor, but they're typically half the size, which is great because it makes them way easier to work with. And they're perfect for mixing things up, varying your spices or your preparation between the different birds on the table, which is what we'll be doing today. I will be smoking these birds, but for those non-barbecue folks out there, don't change channel just yet. You can always just use your oven set to the same temperature listed in the recipe. Now the first step in prep with all poultry, dry off the skin as much as possible using paper towels. Everyone wants crispy skin, and starting with dry skin is one of those crucial steps to get to that result. Now that the hens are nice and dry, let's talk about the two different ways I'm gonna be cooking these birds. The bird on the right, we're gonna spatchcock and then we'll heavily spice it with a dry rub. We'll be cooking this hen in the jerk chicken style, which is gonna have a ton of excellent savory, spicy flavor notes. The bird on the left, we're gonna leave whole, then stuff and season with lemon, garlic, salt, and pepper for a more traditional roasted bird presentation. Let's get started on the spatchcock bird. Now for those not familiar with the term, we'll be taking poultry shears or a very sharp knife and removing the spine out of the bird completely so it can lay flat while cooking. Once you've removed the spine, take a very sharp knife and make a shallow cut into the sternum. Turn the bird over, skin facing up, and press down until the hen is laying flat on a pan. Now you're ready to start seasoning. Start out by giving the hen skin a thin coat of olive oil. This will ensure your spices stick and it will also help interact with the high heat to crisp up that skin. First up, I'm gonna give this hen a healthy dose of musket powder gold label. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm a huge fan and this honey chipotle flavor in the gold label specifically is a perfect base for that jerk chicken style cooking we're aiming for. While I'm already talking about them, the good folks at Musky Powder are offering 10% off your order if you use the code TEXAN10. So make sure to check them out and grab a couple bottles of your own. After the musket powder, I made a very simplified jerk chicken style rub that's equal parts smoked paprika, red pepper flakes, and chipotle powder. Apply your rub liberally. Now let's set that bird aside and get started on prepping the other hen. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we'll be leaving this bird whole, and the first step for this presentation will be stuffing it with garlic and lemon slices. I'm using roughly 10 cloves of garlic here, so the flavor really permeates through the carcass. You don't have to mince them like mine are, I'm just working with one of those jars of pre-minced garlic. After the garlic, take an entire lemon, cut it into thin slices, and stuff the rest of the cavity. Just like the other bird, make sure to coat the skin entirely in olive oil. Now we'll be seasoning the hen with a rub I put together, which consists of one tablespoon black pepper, one tablespoon salt, one tablespoon garlic powder, and finally one teaspoon of baking powder. Once done with seasoning, instead of immediately cooking these hens, set the birds in your fridge for a minimum of one hour up to about eight. The dry air in your fridge will actually help remove moisture from the skin while also giving your spices time to set. After the fridge, now it's time to head outside and smoke these hens. I'm using my big green egg today, but you can use just about any type of smoker or grill as long as it can hold a temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit and keep the birds away from any direct flames or super hot coals. Place both birds breast facing up on the grate and let them smoke at 250 until the internal temp of their thigh meat reads about 140 degrees. The times vary from grill to grill, but for the sake of reference, mine took about 45 minutes to hit that temp. Once internal temp at the dark meat hits that 140 mark, take them off the grill, set them on a cooling rack over a pan ideally, and then let's head into the kitchen for a quick finish in the oven. Now we're gonna use the oven instead of cranking up the egg to a higher heat because simply put, it's easier to control that final finishing blast inside. You're obviously welcome to use whichever method you prefer. Just make sure the hens are now roasting at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until the thigh meat is reading 160 degrees internal. This finishing blast of heat will crisp up that outer skin nicely while also sealing in all that moisture from the low and slow process. It took these hens about 15 minutes to reach that 160 degree mark. And once your hens hit that target, simply take them out, tent them loosely with foil, and let them rest for about 10 minutes. After the rest, all you've got left to do now is plate, carve, and serve. 
Crispy skin on poultry is the gold standard for quality cooks. So let's take a listen. Carving into the lemon garlic hen, the skin crackled under my knife. The inner breast meat was really wet and tender, plus those simple spices of salt, pepper, garlic, and lemon really sang with each bite. Moving over to the very different spatchcock jerk style hen, the skin was similarly crispy, the meat was full of moisture, and all those heavy handed spices lingered on the tongue and mixed really well with the smoke from the big green egg. I can't pick a favorite from the two because my wife and I ate every little piece of both birds. It is, however, a great example of why Cornish hens are so fun to cook. Since they're small and easy to work with, you can mix and match all kinds of recipes, ending up with a table full of wildly different hens to choose from. They're the perfect poultry to play around with when you're trying to find a new spin on a tired old chicken dinner. That'll do it for this one, and thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or anything else to add. I'm always up for talking recipes and helping others on their journey of discovering new food. If you like what you see, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more great content to come. All right, y'all. Take care.